Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. Hope you're all well today. Seriously, boiling hot. I don't know if it's, um, you've heard about London. We've got a drought now, hosepipe ban. I know, what will I do with all that gardening that I love to do? Why are you sniggering? <laughs> I think we're all, I can imagine all the men thinking, oh, great excuse not to have to go out and do all the gardening today, this weekend in the hot weather. Don't worry, it'll all be put back eventually. We'll have some rain in next week. We'll have floods. That's what it's like, isn't it? That's the weather. Back as ever, though, to your breaking ball story of the day. This story is fascinating on a more serious note because it's one that's bringing a lot of heartache to our gracious majesty, the Queen, in her 70th year on the throne. And you can see why, you know, because this ongoing battle between Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and them winning a case against the Metropolitan Police and Her Majesty's government over their security just keeps rolling on and on and as I say it's proving a huge embarrassment so let me explain the reasons why because you may have seen the story that he's won the second round of his privacy case um, against the Mail on Sunday that's the Associated News Group and we we're talking about Prince Harry of course now what's interesting here is if you don't understand this is the true background to the security uh, ongoing battle and let me explain See, Prince Harry has offered to pay for official police security, which he has already been told he cannot do. Now, this was agreed both in the Sandringham Agreement when they decided they wanted to leave, and then again by the Home Office. That's the problem. Prince Harry's offered to pay, but he knows that he can't do this. He knows that it's not an option. He was already told that. Now, you could look at this two ways, and as ever, we have to say allegedly. He knows that by carrying on with this particular case, it bends sort of um, bad blood, if you like, within the media against the British monarchy. And they're going through really tough times right now because we're all living through a cost of living crisis. And that's when the media, in particular, and the Abolish the Monarchy groups, decide to look at the true cost of the monarchy. There you have these palaces that are not filled up with people. You get the picture. So you would have thought that Harry knows exactly how this situation operates. Would have thought, of course, that Harry would have had more tact and diplomacy in his grandmother's 70th year. But he's ploughing ahead. Now, the bigger picture is this. If you look at it this way, in very simple terms, you have a job, say, you're a company CEO, but you decide to go and live in another country and they decide that they want their company car back because, hey, you're not here and you're not using it. It's as simple as that. But what the real situation is this, Prince Harry, when he returns back here to the United Kingdom, but it's all the fun, the fanfare, the pageantry, and of course, the attention that comes with having top security when you fly into London Heathrow or perhaps a private airport, as they often do. But seemingly they don't want to be here full time to do the work as a working royal. So whichever way you look at it, he's got a winning hand. And the person that really suffers the most senior members of the British monarchy, and more importantly, our gracious monarch. And when you think about it at 96 years old, do you think she ever thought one of her biggest problems for her in dealing with the media would, of course, be her grandson, Prince Harry? Truly, you would have thought he would have had more care and consideration, but as ever, seemingly not. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.